Well, happy Super Bowl Sunday, everybody. I hope that your favorite team wins. And um, due to some details that are in the news, I'm going to revisit something I talked about a while ago, a revelation that the Lord gave me about, you know, the Antichrist. And I just want to read this to you, and then I'm going to give you the scripture again that where I talked about that. And hopefully it'll help to solidify in your mind the true meaning of that scripture and how it plays a role in the last days. One of the things that Haaretz is reporting is this uproar over ultra-Orthodox party, which is the Shaz party, plan to criminalize immodest dress and non-Orthodox prayer at the Western Wall. The legislation being pushed by the Shaz party mandates half a year in prison and a fine of up to 10,000 shekels or $2,867 for violators. Women who read the Torah, blow a shofar, put on prayer shawls, or don phylacteries. The Shaz party announced that it will push for the passage of a bill criminalizing non-Orthodox prayer at the Western Wall and banning the wearing of clothes. All right, well, I want to revisit the interpretation of a scripture that I told you what the Lord was showing me about that scripture and how the whole thing is right now being set up in place in Israel. And, you know, I talked all about the scriptures proving Mystery Babylon the Great being Jerusalem. I know it's a shocker. I know that other people have not seen it. The Holy Spirit has to reveal it to you and show you in scripture. So, this is what was going on in ancient times where they were persecuting the women. The women were not allowed to read the Torah for themselves. They were not allowed to study holy books. That's what this whole movie of Barbara Streisand that did Yentl, that's what that was all about, that she dressed as a man so she could go to to the uh, university and study, well, in her case, it was Talmud and the Jewish books, and they were not allowed to read the Torah for themselves. I talk about some of this in my book, The Almond Tree, Aaron's Rod, the Messiah, King of Israel, and um, it's a very, very revealing story in there about Jesus allowing women to come to him freely and talk to him him being the Word of God. So, right now, what's going on over in Israel that we think everything is copacetic over there and everything's holy and righteous and all of this is Christians. We want to go travel there. We want to see the holy sites where Jesus was. And yet, there's this element that's evil, doing evil, setting up evil, and also, the ultra-Orthodox have spit on women in the past when they've had a sleeveless shirt on that shows their shoulders, they'll spit. The rabbis will spit on the women. And they also spat upon a little eight-year-old girl because she was not supposed to do something at a certain time or a certain way, and she was scared to death to walk to school. So, this is something that happened quite a few years ago, but, you know, this is the same attitude that's there. You know, God never said that women cannot read the Word of God for themselves. That is just so wicked. And, you know, it reminds me of how uh, Jesus was saying that they strain out a gnat and swallow a camel or something to that effect, um, paraphrasing, and, you know, it's it's just like they prevent people from going to heaven or to knowing God by doing these laws. So here's this article in Haaretz, uh, Uproar over ultra-Orthodox parties plan to criminalize immodest dress and non-Orthodox prayer at the Western Wall. 
The legislation being pushed by the Shaz, which is ultra-Orthodox party, mandates half a year in prison and a fine of up to 10,000 shekels for violators. Women who read the Torah, blow a shofar, put on prayer shawls, or don phylacteries. The Shaz party announced that it will push for the passage of a bill criminalizing non-orthodox prayer at the Western Wall and banning the wearing of certain clothes unbefitting of the holy site sanctity. According to the ultra-orthodox party, the legislation which mandates penalties of half a year in prison and a fine of up to 10,000 shekels, which is $2,867, Four violators will be advanced at a meeting of the Ministerial Committee for Legislative Affairs today on Sunday. Later on Thursday, Justice Minister Yariv Levin's office released a statement saying that the bill will not be put to a vote. Such sanctions would apply to women who read the Torah. We were created equally, and we have every right to read God's Word, and the Jewish women as well. This applies to women who read the Torah, blow a shofar, put on prayer shawls, or don phylacteries. Moreover, the bill would prevent the playing of music in the complex, a distinguishing feature of prayer services of non-Orthodox services. So they don't want you praising the Lord with music. They want to control who can do what, when, and where, and how by their own made-up laws. Christians would not be allowed to go up there and pray like we do in Jesus' name. Men who assist in such activities would also be held liable. The law proposed today to imprison and fine Jews for practicing Judaism at our people's holiest site is a stain on the Jewish state. See, she's turning into the scarlet harlot. She committed fornication against God in ancient times. She's rejected her king, and Jesus is not coming again until they repent, until they say, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. The law proposed today to imprison and fine Jews for practicing Judaism at our people's holiest site is a stain on the Jewish state, declared World Zionist Organization Vice Chairman Dr. Yishar Hess, a former executive director of the conservative movement in Israel. The Kotel, or Western Wall, belongs to every Jew, period. We will fight any attempt to criminalize millions of Jews practicing their faith in their state, he declared, calling the announcement of the legislation further proof that the battle for a democratic, liberal, and pluralistic Israel that's a home for each and every Jew belongs not to Israelis alone. Jews around the world must make their voices heard, he asserted, stating that this is a battle not only for the soul of the state of Israel, it is a battle for your fundamental rights in your homeland. The bill's language echoed that found in Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's coalition agreement with the ultra-Orthodox United Torah Judaism Party, which stipulated that public worship at the Western Wall will continue to be held according to the custom of the place, which is according to Torah law, meaning orthodox custom. In coalition talks with Netanyahu's in coalition talks with Netanyahu's Likud UTJ demanded significant measures for deterrence against non orthodox worship at the Western Wall, insisting that the incoming coalition enshrine in the law the principle that prayer at the Jerusalem holy site be held only according to the custom of the chief rabbinate. They want to set women back 500 years. Israel's rabbinical court's horrifying power. Why Israel's most religious government would be bad for religious Jews. The Bible belongs to you too. When we were created equal in the image of God, and we have equal right to study the Word of God. Such a move would effectively criminalize 
Reform Judaism and conservative prayer as well as the multi-denominational feminist prayer group Women of the Wall and if passed into law would represent a significant change for a prime minister who had previously stated that the Western Wall is a source of unity for our people and not a source of division. Liberal religious movements and opposition politicians were quick to criticize Shaz's measure, with Women of the Wall Executive Director Yochi Rappaport calling the proposed law, quote, an outrageous extremist attack on freedom of worship, end quote. In 2023, women would be arrested fined and prosecuted in the Jewish state for praying according to Jewish custom, according to this bill they're putting forward for this new law. We will not stop praying the way we have for over three decades. If we have to sit in jail, we will sit in jail, Rappaport declared. Participants in Women of the Wall services often wear prayer shawls and phylacteries drawing the ire of the ultra-Orthodox men who consider those practices reserved for men. The organization is frequently harassed at the wall and have come under violent attack from ultra-Orthodox male worshipers as have organized conservative and reformed Jewish groups. Hess has also been targeted at the Western Wall with an ultra-Orthodox man at the Holy Site telling him in 2018, according to a post published on Facebook, which said, quote, he said, I will murder you. If I had a knife, I'd put it in you right here. If I had an axe, I'd do this to you. You're a heretic. It's permitted to kill you. So this is the attitude that they have, which is very ungodly, I must say. The reform movement in Israel called the bill shameful and disgraceful and stated that the Western Wall cannot be run as an ultra-Orthodox synagogue, while opposition leader Yair Lapid predicted that if this legislation passes, Israel is no longer a free country and the Western Wall would become a symbol of the oppression of women, discrimination against the secular, and the disillusion of our alliance with world Jewry. In a statement, Labor M.K. Gilad Kariv, the first non-Orthodox rabbi elected to the legislature, described the law as an effort to give the chief rabbinate a predatory monopoly on the holy site at the expense of previous efforts to broker a compromise over pluralistic prayer. Culture and Sports Minister Mickey Zohar, a member of Benjamin Netanyahu's Likud party, came out against the proposal, tweeting on Thursday that the Western Wall belongs to all the people of Israel and is holy to all Jews. Preserving the status quo is critical for the keeping of the nation united, he added. Ishai Cohen, a journalist for ultra-Orthodox website, Kakar HaShabbat, also criticized the initiative via Twitter. Take a step back. The Western Wall Bill will only increase the provocations and intensify the desecration of the most sacred place. It will also increase polarization among people and hatred for religious groups. In addition, according to Rabbi Rick Jacobs, the president of the Union for Reform Judaism, putting non-ultra-Orthodox women in jail for praying at the Western Wall is an outrageous move. The fair solution was negotiated years ago by Prime Minister Netanyahu and it's called the Kotel or Western Wall Compromise. So then it says in 2016 Netanyahu had previously declared that as Prime Minister he would ensure that the Western Wall is a source of unity for our people and not a source of division brokered a deal which would have seen the creation of a permanent egalitarian which means you're equal religiously um, it would be an egalitarian prayer space at the southern expanse of the Western Wall it would be equal but scuttled the compromise the following year after facing intense ultra-Orthodox pressure. 
During his recent stint as opposition chief, however, Netanyahu appeared to backtrack on that rhetoric, amplifying ultra-Orthodox calls to mobilize against the desecration of the Western Wall by non-Orthodox Jews by sharing a tweet by M.K. Arye Derry, the um, chairman of the ultra-Orthodox Shaz Party, calling on everyone for whom the sanctity of the Western Wall is important to come and pray with us so that, God forbid, the holy place will not be desecrated. Times of Israel says coalition bill would ban mixed prayer anywhere at the Western Wall, Nick's egalitarian plaza, making it not equal amongst men and women. Legislation sets jail term for mixed gender prayers, immodest clothing, criminalizes women of the wall activity amid outrage. Prime Minister says bill won't come up right now, status quo to stay. As reported by Michael Bachner, February 9th, 2023, and the government caused outrage Thursday in Israel after news broke that it was expediting a bill to impose sweeping new restrictions on freedom of worship at the Western Wall, banning egalitarian mixed gender prayer at the section of the holy site where it is now allowed, criminalizing the activity of the Women of the Wall prayer rights group and banning visitors from wearing attire deemed immodest. The legislation would penalize offenders with a six-month prison term. And as I told you, 10,000 shekels. A few hours after the news broke that the bill had been added to Sunday's agenda of the Ministerial Committee for Legislation's Sunday meeting, drawing fierce and widespread condemnation, Likud said it had removed it from the agenda. So this is something that they want to put in place. Even though they remove it now, they could put it in, in the future. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu vowed in a statement that the status quo at the Western Wall will be maintained. He said he had spoken with coalition chiefs and they agreed the bill won't come up right now. He added, and if it does come up, it won't include the clauses criminalizing immodest clothing or musical instruments, which are unacceptable to everyone. As far as the law stating that they couldn't have musical instruments playing. The bill, which had been mentioned in coalition agreements in general terms, was added the last moment to the committee's agenda, with Hebrew media reporting that Shaz party leader Ari Derry wanted the bill to pass its preliminary reading in the plenum over the next few days. The Ynet News site cited sources in Likud saying the party had been caught by surprise by Shaz's move to include the bill in the committee's Sunday agenda, a move that apparently hadn't been coordinated with. The report said that the move highlights the complex relationship between Derry and Netanyahu. And I was just reading that they're hoping to put Derry back in. The bill filed by Shaz M.K., Uriel Busso would shut down the pluralistic prayer area and criminalize mixed gender prayer anywhere at the Western Wall. It stipulates that it would become prohibited to hold a ceremony, including a religious ceremony not in accordance with the site's traditions that harms the feelings of the worshipers in relation to the site. The site's traditions are defined in the bill as being set by the ultra-Orthodox led chief rabbinate. In addition, the controversial proposed law would outlaw wearing attire that doesn't befit the sanctity of the site, a reference to clothing especially worn by women deemed insufficiently modest by the ultra-orthodox rabbinical standards. It would also make playing music or singing at the site without prior approval a criminal offense. I just can't even believe that. God wants us to sing praises to Him. He wants us to play instruments and lift our voices in thanksgiving to Him, and they are trying to subdue and suppress that. Unbelievable. Okay, so it would ban violations of the Sabbath Jewish day of rest at the site including the use of mobile phones, for example. 
According to a map attached to the law bill, all the aforementioned restrictions would be in effect throughout the entire area of the Western Wall site, including the adjacent Davidson Center and the egalitarian plaza south of the central plaza that currently serves as a restriction-free prayer space for non-Orthodox Jews. Within the women's section, the law would outlaw ceremonies that include bringing out a Torah scroll and reading from it. So you can't have your Bible. Okay, you can't read the Torah. Unbelievable. And I'm sure this makes God really angry. So as I said, it, uh, it would outlaw women blowing a shofar, wearing a tallit prayer shawl, or putting on tefillin, phylacteries, all of these have been practiced by women of the wall at the site. A series of court rulings have upheld its right to perform these rituals at the women's section of the Western Wall with the exception of bringing a Torah scroll. God would be very upset about that. The Western Wall is one of the few remnants of the ancient retaining wall that held up an artificial plateau on which a refurbished Second Temple stood during the reign of King Herod the Great, of which I beg to differ upon my own study of the site. The temple and much of the wall were later destroyed by the Romans in 70 AD. For Jews who are forbidden from praying on the Temple Mount by Israeli regulations, the Western Wall is the prayer site closest to the ancient site of the Holy of Holies inside the destroyed temple. It is considered the holiest site where Jews are allowed to pray. Hebrew media reports said the government's aims to quickly advance the bill and have it pass a preliminary reading in the Knesset plenum due to a looming high court discussion in which the state will have to submit in response to petitions demanding that it formally recognize the egalitarian section or allow mixed gender prayer at the main plaza. Unnamed Shaz officials were quoted by the Walla News site as saying that if the bill passes a Knesset vote before the February 28th discussion, the state will be able to tell the court that the matter is being dealt with via legislation, making judicial intervention unnecessary. The development drew a torrent of criticism Thursday from opposition figures, liberal rights groups, and others. Women of the Wall called it an outrage and vowed to continue to pray in accordance with its customs as it is done for almost 30 years. This is a time of emergency for everyone to whom a Jewish and democratic Israel is important, for everyone who views it as important to preserve the Western Wall as the home of the entire Jewish people, the group said. A complete subordination of the site to the chief rabbinate is in complete contradiction to the existing situation and critically harms freedom of worship, especially in the women's section, it added. The implication of the law is that for the first time women will be prevented by law from praying according to their customs and anyone who doesn't accept the authority of the rabbinate will simply become a criminal. Opposition leader Yair Lapid said the legislation means one thing, the Western Wall no longer belongs to everybody. The extremist government is continuing to tear the nation of Israel apart. They can't decide for us who is less Jewish or more Jewish. And might I add there that, you know, the persecution of Gentiles, you know, um, some of these ultra-Orthodox, they really treat Gentiles like dogs underneath them. I mean, my grandfather used to say, when you, if you walk down the sidewalk in Chicago, it used to be that the Jews would bump you off the sidewalk, these ultra-Orthodox ones, and, you know, treat people, other people like they weren't legitimate in the eyes of God. But that's not how God is. God created all of us. So this is extreme prejudice. He added, if this legislation passes, Israel will no longer be a free country. Rather than a symbol of unity, the Western Wall will become a symbol of the oppression of women 
discrimination against secular people, and the dismantling of our alliance with the world Jewry. Many opposition figures echoed that sentiment, including the previous Diaspora Affairs Minister, Nachman Shai, who tweeted that the bill is a formula for utterly disrupting our relationship with the diaspora. Go for it. Why not? You don't care about them anyway. Even some coalition figures criticized the proposal. Culture and Sports Minister Mickey Zohar said that the Western Wall belongs to the entire nation of Israel and is sacred to all Jews, and there is no need for laws to preserve the site's sanctity. Preserving the status quo on religion and state is critical to safeguarding the nation's unity. Hidush, a nonprofit advocating for religious freedom and equality, said the proposal should be titled Shaz versus the Jewish People, and that in a normal time Netanyahu would have made sure to take it off the agenda. But in these times, when his government depends on fulfilling the outlandish dreams of the ultra-Orthodox, the ministerial committee will probably approve the demand on Sunday and put Israel into another whirlwind in its relationship with diaspora Jewry, said Hidush director Yuri Regev. The reform movement called the bill an absolute shame, saying the Western Wall can't be managed as if it's a Haredi synagogue. It seems like the government of Israel has forgotten that the state of Israel is the state of the entire Jewish nation, it said. Instead of implementing the Western Wall compromise, which was a proportionate and acceptable solution, and it was approved by Netanyahu's government in 2016, the current government is encouraging thuggery, polarization, and violence in advancing an extreme policy. Ne'imei Torah the Advoda, a religious Zionist organization, said that the legislation would only cause harm and coercion in the forms of prayer at the Western Wall, which should be a home to every Jew regardless of their form of prayer. The group said the proposal was creating a provocation that inflames the discourse and distances people from Torah and from their Jewish identity. Following the outcry, Channel 12 News cited a senior Shaz Party official saying the clauses setting the prison term and fine would be removed from the proposal soon. Uh-huh. So then what happened? The Times of Israel reported today by Judah Ari Gross in the Times of Israel that a woman stripped down to a swimsuit at the Western Wall in apparent protest of the modesty bill. Demonstrator detained by police taken to station for questioning. Chief rabbi of sight decries despicable act of provocation. Well, you know, to them, what they're saying for this bill to criminalize women at the site and put them in jail, that's a provocation of extreme extremism. A woman stripped down to a bathing suit at the Western Wall on Sunday morning in an apparent protest of a contentious bill that would criminalize immodest dress at the holy site. The woman was detained by police and had taken to the nearby station for questioning. She could face charges of insult to religion which carry a possible sentence of up to three years in prison. Give me a break. The woman whose name has not been released entered the woman's section of the western wall where she disrobed, remained in a two-piece bathing suit and sneakers. After a few moments, police arrived and detained her. Police said she was a 35-year-old resident of central Jerusalem and was detained on the suspicion that she'd stripped off her clothes in a holy place deliberately. Under Israeli law, insult to religion is a criminal offense defined as someone who destroys, damages, or defames a place of worship or any object considered holy to a group of people with the intention of degrading religion or with the knowledge that their actions would be seen as insulting religion, their punishment three years in prison. The chief rabbi of the Western Wall, Shmuel Rabinovich, decried her actions. We are horrified by the despicable act of provocation this morning at the Western Wall Plaza, which desecrated the holiness of the site and deeply offended the public and worshipers. 
Rabinovich said in a statement, The Western Wall is a sacred site for every Jew and Jewess. It's not a place for dispute or provocation of any kind. The woman evidently planned her protest well in advance. Activist photographer Owen Zeev was apparently tipped off about her intentions and accompanied her to the Western Wall, filming the scene as it unfolded from the main plaza with a telephoto lens. Well, you know, if you're going to do and suppress women and jail them for reading God's word. What kind of provocation is that? That's even way worse than showing up in a bathing suit. Granted, I wouldn't show up there in a bathing suit just because, you know, I would want to be honoring God up there and, you know, as somebody said, God knows what we look like under our clothes anyway. He created us in our mother's womb. Her strip protest appeared to be in response to the recent bill proposed by the ultra-Orthodox Shaz Party that would make it a criminal offense, which we had said was punishable by 10,000 shekels uh, fine to dress immodestly at the Western Wall or pray there in a manner not recognized by the chief rabbinate. The proposal met immediate fierce criticism, including from within the coalition, and was quickly shelved, though similar proposals are likely to appear again in the future, just as I told you. Something that happened um, in 2016 there that I wanted to mention is the ultra-Orthodox Jews were clashing with women's group. And this happened uh, March 8th of 2019. Thousands of ultra-Orthodox Jews were bussed in to disrupt a prayer service by the liberal women of the wall group. Members of the group had to be escorted out for their safety after being spit on and threatened. At the time, clashes broke out between thousands of young ultra-Orthodox Jews and the Women of the Wall, which is Neshot HaKotel movement, at the Western Wall in Jerusalem. The Women of the Wall, a multi-denominational group which has been pushing for equal prayer rights for women at the Holy Site, held a prayer to mark the group's 30th anniversary as well as the start of the new Jewish month. Thousands of young ultra-Orthodox Jews were brought in on buses in an attempt to disrupt the Women of the Wall prayer, the Jerusalem Post had reported. The youths threatened, spat at, and physically assaulted women of the wall members, reported the Haaretz newspaper. The group reported that the two women were injured in the clashes. Barry Weiss, an op-ed staff editor at the New York Times, said on Twitter that she was also spat on while observing the women of the wall event. She said, I had never been spit on in my life before this morning when I went to the hotel, the Western Wall, to check out Women of the Wall. Turns out their opponents are really into spitting. Sickening. Israeli police did not say whether anyone had been injured in the incident. Of course, the two women were. And they said that there had been heightened tensions and curse words lobbied between the two sides. During the prayers, friction arose between the worshipers, including the women of the wall, including curses and various comments, a police statement said. Police also accused some members of the women of the wall group of setting out to deliberately create conflict and provocation by entering the main prayer area. And all the women want to do is to be free to worship God there and not be told what to do. God did not put this hindrance on women. It's these men that are hindering them. And this was part of the curse, as I told you in the book of Genesis. Um, in the beginning, God created Adam and he created Eve, and they were equal. It wasn't until the curse came that God said that men would rule over women and it's part of the curse. So this is what they're implementing is part of the curse upon the women there. And police also accuse some of the members of the women of the wall group setting out to deliberately create conflict and provocation by entering the main prayer area. 
the authorities added that they separated the two groups to maintain public order and that the women of the Wall members later continued to pray at a more remote area of the Western Wall that's designated for non-Orthodox worship. The women of the Wall have been demanding changes to rules at the site that prohibit women from leading Jewish prayer, wearing prayer shawls, or handling Torah scrolls. Friday's prayer also coincided, and this was back in 2019, with the International Women's Day. Back in 2017, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's government halted plans to create a mixed-gender prayer site at the Western Wall, following apparent pressure from the ultra-Orthodox leaders. So that is extremely surprising to me. You know, I don't know him personally, but... Um, this is what was happening in ancient times. And Jesus let all the women come to him because the living Torah was given to them as well as men. So this is just crazy. Now I'm going to show you how this fits in with the scripture now. So I've read three different articles here, actually four. Now let's go back to the prophet Daniel, who was the prince of Judah, was part of the monarchy, and he was writing about what would befall his people in the last days. This is what's happening to, to the monarchy and the sons and daughters of Zion. When we are thinking about the Antichrist, and you know I revealed to you all about Israel played the scarlet harlot. She was dressed in purple and scarlet. She was raised on that. And she is Mystery Babylon the Great in the book of Revelation where they restore the monarchy. They set a king upon the throne. Talking there about the restoration of Israel's monarchy. And Israel's monarchy was the one that had the wound by a sword and yet lived. So this is not talking about some future you know, death and resurrection to imitate Jesus in that section. It's talking about something that's taken place and now we've got a new king after 2,000 years that's going to be set upon the throne and it's going to be the Sanhedrin rabbis that appoint the king. And this is what's happening in Revelation 13. Okay, so we know that Daniel was talking about the monarchy because he was praying for the rebuilding of the temple. He was praying for God's divine presence to return to the holy Mount Moriah in Jerusalem. And the restoration of the monarchy um, and having a new king put upon the throne. Okay, so that's what they're going to do, but they're going to use an earthly king, as I've told you many, many times in many videos. So we see in that scripture, Daniel 11.37, about the Antichrist. And there's many translations of this, and it's been wrongly interpreted by many, many pastors. Sadly enough, saying that this is talking about the Antichrist being a homosexual, but it has nothing at all to do with that. And I talked about this before, but just think about what they're doing there to the women with this bill, if they pass this bill and put it into law, criminalizing women, because they want to read the Word of God for themselves. And also they knew that one of the women would give birth to the Messiah, and they wanted to be the woman that would do that, that would give them salvation. Okay, that's what it's talking about in Genesis, that the woman would, uh, you know, be saved in childbirth. It's talking about the birth of the Messiah that brings them the salvation. So here in Daniel eleven thirty seven, 37, I'll read several different interpretations. The first one here is the New International Version. It says, He will show no regard for the gods of his ancestors or for the one desired by women. Okay, it's not saying he does not desire women, like in a sexual way. It's saying that he will show no regard for the one desired by women, nor will he regard any god, but will exalt himself above them all. Okay, so the next one is New Living Translation. He will have no respect for the gods of his ancestors 
or for the God loved by women. So they're preventing the women from even carrying a Torah scroll and opening it and reading the word of God. This is against God. This is opposition of God right there in Jerusalem, right there at Holy Mount Moriah. Let me read that again. He will have no respect for the gods of his ancestors or for the God loved by women or for any other God, for he will boast that he is greater than them all. That can't be any clearer. It's not talking about a homosexual antichrist. And the Antichrist is not um, some future situation where he receives the deadly wound by a sword and yet lived. It's speaking of Israel's monarchy that had the wound by a sword and yet lived. And I've spelled this out with many, many scriptures in past videos. So it's a little bit confusing in the King James Version where it says neither shall he regard the God of his fathers nor the desire of women. Okay, so right there it makes it sound like he's not desiring women, but that's not what it's saying. Not at all. It says he will not regard any God for he shall magnify himself above all. So right there they, uh, this person is suppressing the desire of women which is to worship God. Which is the God that they love. Down here at the Christian Standard Bible says this version. He will not show regard for the gods of his ancestors, the God desired by women. So there they are at the Western Wall and these ultra-Orthodox, the rabbinate, does not show regard for the God desired by women. He doesn't want them there praying equally. He doesn't want them having the Torah scroll to read openly or to worship God in any manner that shows God respect. The God desired by women or for any other God because he will magnify himself above all. Down here, this is an interesting one. It says contemporary English version. It says, this king will reject the gods of his ancestors worshipped and the god preferred by women. In fact, he will put himself above all gods. JPS Tanakh 1917 version says, Neither shall he regard the gods of his fathers and neither the desire of women. It doesn't say he doesn't desire women. It says he doesn't regard the desire of women. So he doesn't care that women want to worship God. They want to open the Torah scroll for themselves. They're being set over in another area, separated from the men like they're not equal. And this is the Antichrist spirit. And they are magnifying themselves above it all. So in other words, they are putting into God's Word, something that God never said to do to women. He didn't tell them not to read the Torah. In fact, when Jesus came, he drew the women to himself, and the men came to Jacob's well, and they were shocked that Jesus the Messiah was talking to a woman. Okay? So there's a lot more to that story in my book if you want to read it. Um the almond tree, Aaron's rod, the Messiah, King of Israel, where I spell out exactly what the Lord revealed in that section, and it's really stunning. Okay, so, um, what else shall we say here? So it's basically stating in Daniel 11.37, there's a title that says, The King Who Exalts Himself. So this is going to be a king. It's going to be the restoration of the monarchy when these laws are put in place. And once again, it says here, this is an additional translation. Then the king will do as he pleases and will exalt and magnify himself above every god. And he will speak monstrous things against the god of gods. He will be successful until the time of wrath is completed. For what has been decreed must be accomplished. Now remember this was for 
the children of Israel. This was for the restoration of the monarchy of Israel in Judah. This doesn't have anything to do with the church in the last days. This has everything to do with Israel and a king they're going to set on that throne. And he will show no regard for the gods of his fathers, nor for the one desired by women, which is the Lord, nor for any other God, because he will magnify himself above them all, and in their place he will honor a God of fortresses, a God his fathers did not know, with gold, silver, precious stones, and riches. And what did the Sanhedrin member say to the Turk, Adnan Akhtar? I just about fell out of my chair when he said it because I always knew if I heard these words, it would be the fulfillment of what's going on in Revelation. But he said, if they get all the Arab nations together, which Donald Trump did through the Abrahamic Accords much later on, and that was happening and still countries are, you know, maybe going to join up with that. Um, he said they get the, the Arab countries together and then they basically go and find the Messiah. And it's going to be a man. They expect him to be a human man with no miracle working powers, not the power of God. They don't consider that God himself said in the Old Testament, God has become my Yeshua. God has become my Savior, my Redeemer, my salvation. So they don't see, they're blinded to who their king is in part until the fullness of the Gentiles comes in. One that says he will not show regard for the gods of his fathers, the God longed for by women or for any other God because he'll magnify himself above them all. And this is the king that they're going to appoint to restore the monarchy of Israel, which is why I told you that they're trying to uh, weaken the democracy and the Supreme Court because we know that the Sanhedrin wants to become the world Supreme Court, the judicial system of the world system, the one world government. We cannot be deceived by all of these things because we know that Jesus said all of these things were going to come to pass. Jesus is the one opening the scroll that Daniel was told to seal until the time of the end. And only the true king of kings, the monarch that will reign forever, is allowed to open Daniel's scroll to bring forth the wrath and judgment of God. And God said he would judge his people. And yes, there's going to be a righteous remnant, those who've accepted Jesus as king, Yeshua as king, you know, and they will in the tribulation, they'll see the truth and their eyes will be unblinded. So what's interesting about this is as long as they say that they're going to keep the status quo on the Temple Mount, that means things will remain the way that they are with the women praying on one side of the wall and the men on the other. And they still don't have equal footing. But if the status quo changes and the King of Jordan is taken out of the way and that man of sin revealed the son of perdition, then we can see how this group is going to criminalize and do all kinds of things to people that are not only women, but people that are not ultra-Orthodox. So I hope that clarifies for you in your mind the truth that this scripture in Daniel 11:37 is not talking about an antichrist that's a homosexual. It's talking about the rights of women being able to worship God from the Torah scroll, from, you know, to have the Word of God and not be prevented from reading the Word of God from themselves. This is what Jesus gave us the freedom to not be under these rules and regulations that have been binding people and preventing them from coming to God. Can you imagine being a woman there in Israel as a Jewess and you're told you can't even open up a Torah scroll and read it there 
praying at God's holy mountain. That's not what God told them to do, to suppress the women there. So I just have to speak out about what the real meaning of that scripture is so that you can understand that this is the Antichrist system setting up right now. They are going to put an earthly king on that throne of the monarchy and restore it after 2,000 years. They're not waiting for Jesus to descend from heaven. And Jesus is opening Daniel's scroll to bring forth the wrath of God and the judgments because they've rejected him as their king. I'm sorry that that's the way it is. I'm really shocked about it myself. But the Holy Spirit has revealed so much to me. And I'm just trying to show you in the news things that coincide with these scriptures. And one of the horrible things about the Jewish women in history from the Bible, they were labeled, stamped as though they were prostitutes, which is not accurate. And the whole lie told about Mary Magdalene is just so corrupt and evil, I can't get over it. When in reality, she was the most faithful to Jesus, to the Messiah. So where do we see this? We see this in Genesis 3, that this was part of the curse of Eden. To the woman, he said, I will surely multiply your pain in childbearing. In pain you shall bring forth children. Your desire shall be contrary to your husband, but he shall rule over you. That is part of the curse that came from the Garden of Eden. But Jesus the Messiah reverses the curse of the Garden of Eden there in Jerusalem where the Garden of Eden was. So now we can take and eat the fruit from the tree of life and live forever and enter in to the Garden of Eden-like state when the Lord comes to take us to the place that he's prepared for us in John 14. What did the Messiah say to the Pharisees and Sadducees that were up at the temple? Whoever exalts himself will be humbled, and whoever humbles himself will be exalted. But woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! So this is totally hypocritical that they're saying that this woman did a provocation, and yet they're provoking the women into that position to have to protest. It's hypocrisy. For you shut the kingdom of heaven in people's faces. For you neither enter yourselves nor allow those who would enter to go in. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For you travel across sea and land to make a single proselyte and when he becomes a proselyte, you make him twice as much a child of hell as yourselves. Woe to you blind guides who say, If anyone swears by the temple, it's nothing. But if anyone swears by the gold of the temple, he is bound by his oath. You blind fools. For which is greater, the gold or the temple that has made the gold sacred? And you say, if anyone swears by the altar, it's nothing. But if anyone swears by the gift that's on the altar, he's bound by his oath. You blind men, for which is greater, the gift or the altar that makes the gift sacred? So whoever swears by the altar swears by it and everything on it. And whoever swears by the temple swears by it and by him who dwells in it. And whoever swears by heaven swears by the throne of God and by him who sits upon it. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For you tithe mint and dill and cumin and have neglected the weightier matters of the law, which are justice and mercy and faithfulness. These you ought to have done without neglecting the others. You blind guides, straining out a gnat and swallowing a camel. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you clean the outside of the cup and the plate, but the inside they are full of greed and self-indulgence. You blind Pharisees, first clean the inside of the cup and the plate, that the outside might also be clean. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, 
For you are like whitewashed tombs which outwardly appear beautiful and within are full of dead people's bones and all uncleanness. So you also outwardly appear righteous to others, but within you are full of hypocrisy and lawlessness. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For you build the tombs of the prophets and decorate the monuments of the righteous, saying, If we had lived in the days of our fathers, we would not have taken part with them in shedding the blood of the prophets. Thus you witness against yourselves that you are sons of those who murdered the prophets. Fill up then the measure of your fathers, you serpents, you brood of vipers. How are you to escape being sentenced to hell? Therefore I send you prophets and wise men and scribes, some of whom you will kill and crucify, some you will flog in your synagogues and persecute from town to town, so that on you may come all the righteous blood shed on earth, from the righteous blood of Abel to the blood of Zechariah, son of Berechiah, whom you murdered between the sanctuary and the altar. Truly I say to you, all these things will come upon this generation. O oh, Jerusalem! Jerusalem, the city that kills the prophets and stones those who are sent to it. How often would I have gathered your children together as a hen gathers a brood under her wings, and you were not willing. See, your house is left to you desolate, for I tell you, you will not see me again. They won't see their king until they say, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Baruch Habab Hashem Adonai. They were hypocrites then, they're hypocrites now. They want to change the law, they want to suppress women. This is exactly what they did when Jesus was at the temple. And did he say that they were going to a place of paradise in heaven? No, he said that they would go to a place of hell because they prevented people from coming to the Word of God freely freely taking and eating of the Word of God and living forever. And this is a shame and should not be happening in the Holy Land where God said He put His name forever for all to worship freely. When we see the judgment in Revelation 18 of Mystery Babylon the Great, it says, Rejoice over her, O heaven, and you holy apostles and prophets, for God has avenged you on her. And who was it that killed the prophets? It was Jerusalem, the ancient monarchy. And this is what's going to be restored in the last days. It says, And a mighty angel took up a stone like a great millstone and threw it into the sea, saying, Thus with violence the great city, Babylon, shall be thrown down. Now remember, Jerusalem is also called Sodom and Egypt, where our Lord was crucified. It's also mystery, Babylon. Thus with violence the great city will be thrown down and will not be found anymore. Now interestingly, the sound of harpists, musicians, flutists, and trumpeters shall not be heard in you anymore. No craftsman of any craft shall be found in you anymore, and the sound of a millstone shall not be heard in you anymore. The light of a lamp shall not shine in you any more, and the voice of the bridegroom and bride shall not be heard in you any more, for your merchants were the great men of the earth, which is true about Jerusalem. For by your sorcery all the nations were deceived, and in her was found the blood of prophets and saints and of all who were slain on the earth. And there you have the revealing of mystery Babylon, the judgment that's coming to Jerusalem. Why does God say that it's going to come to an end? Because he's going to come rule and reign, and he's going to be the rightful heir, the eternal king. And it was the city of Jerusalem that had the blood of the prophets and saints within her. And... The judgment came at the time of Jesus' crucifixion and the Lord paid the price for all the blood from the time of righteous Abel until, uh, you know, the Zechariah, the son of Berechiah. 
who was slain between the temple and the altar. This is mystery Babylon. There's no doubt about it. And there's so many more scriptures I could put in here. But I'm just um, giving these articles about how they are suppressing women from having the word of God. And this is not at all what God intended. And Jesus gave the woman at Jacob's well the living Torah. And the men were shocked. So God's going to put away with the corrupt system that's there in his holy city. He's going to put away with the corrupt rulers and leaders, the democracy, the, you know, um, which I believe they're setting up the uh, parliamentary monarchy by weakening the Supreme Court so they can implement the world ruling by the Sanhedrin that's uh, self-appointed men. So that's pretty much, in a nutshell, what was going on with what Daniel was saying was going to befall his people. And we see their judgment, which nobody's talked about at all because it's the Holy Spirit revealing it right now to us. And to me personally, um, everybody's blindsided by all these other ideas that are just not lining up with what Daniel the prophet was praying for. So he wants the divine presence of God to return to Jerusalem. And it's going to. But first they're going to go through the time of the opening of Daniel's scroll by Jesus. And that will be the seven year time of Jacob's trouble. So for now, I hope that this enlightened you and you're beginning to see the truth about those scriptures and what they really mean and not be led astray by you know people's own personal interpretations but by the Word of God itself and what's happening in the news coinciding with exactly what the king at the time of the end will implement 